so I'm here today to do my book tubeathon TBR. So the book tubeathon is a online readathon uh, created and run by Ariel of Ariel Bassett, who is a friend of mine, and I know how much hard work she puts into this readathon every year. Um, and I try to participate when I can, and I've helped out on occasion, and it's a lot, a lot of fun. And somebody requested that I do a TBR video for the for the readathon this year, so I thought. You know, I have time to film today, why not show you what I'm planning on reading during that week? It starts on the 30th of July and runs for a whole week um, and the purpose is to just try and read a little bit more than you would usually, um, commit your spare time to reading and get involved online on Twitter with other people doing the readathon so that you can kind of spur each other on and help get some of that reading out of the way that you've been meaning to do. There are some challenges which is quite common in readathons um, to help you pick your books, to help you stay motivated. I never do readathon challenges unless the readathon itself is like around a specific challenge. I just don't find that it helps me pick my books. I would rather just pick them and use it as an opportunity to read books I've been meaning to read. So I'm not doing the challenges. Um, I hope you don't mind. So my books probably don't fit into very many of the challenges. I am torn between a couple of things. So I might incorporate some of the challenges to help me pick as the readathon goes along. And I do have about eight books here, which I am not going to read in a week. I can maybe read two books in a week and I'm hoping to push myself to sort of like four in this week because I feel like that would be quite an impressive feat for me to read four books in a week so I'm hoping to read four of these but obviously it's still a wee while away I don't know exactly what I'm going to be in the mood for and I want a little bit of wiggle room so these are the books that I plan on trying to get to during the book Chibathon. So first up, the shortest book on this list probably is actually a Greek play, so I'm really hoping I can read this one in that month, and it's Antigone by Sophocles. This is a bind up of the three Theban plays, which includes Antigone, Oedipus the King, and Oedipus at Colonus. I've actually already read Oedipus the King, but I have never read Antigone, and it is one of the most popular ancient Greek tragic plays out there, and I feel very left out not having read it so I'm I really want to have finally read it and it's also the Patreon book club pick for July August on my Patreon so on my Patreon page I run a book club for my patrons and we pick a book together and we've picked Antigone this time around so I will be doing a live show for patrons at the end of August beginning of September on this on this tragedy and I'd like to get to it very soon and see how I feel about it and all the hype around it. I then have two books I'm really keen to get to but I think I'll probably only read one of them during the book Tubathon so it's deciding which one I'll read and they are both queer fantasy novels. So I picked both of these up in Gaze the Word which is a bookshop here in London and they're both fantasy novels with romances involving two women at the centre. So the first one is Of Fire and Stars which is a young adult novel and it's about a young princess who's betrothed to a prince from another kingdom to broken alliance between their people however she also has a magical ability uh, connected with fire and um, the kingdom that she's kind of betrothed to doesn't approve of magic so she can't reveal this to anybody else and then I imagine as the story continues she falls in love with a young woman I've heard really great things about this and I also have the tiger's daughter the tagline being even gods can be slain by Kay Arsenal Rivera this one is an adult fantasy novel and it's set in a kind of magical empire which is kind of falling down around the people, things are going awry, I mean empires <laughs> bound to happen isn't it? And we follow two female warriors in this empire and uh, kind of what they're up to and their story and their love story. So one of these two I definitely like to get to during the readathon. Let me know if you have any thoughts. In terms of audiobook, I imagine I'll have finished the audiobook I'm listening to now by the time the book Tubeathon starts. So the next audiobook I want to listen to is Misogynation by Laura Bates with the tagline The True Scale of Sexism. This is a collection of essays written by Laura Bates, some of which I think have been published in newspapers before and some I imagine were written specifically for the collection. But I think Laura Bates is fabulous. She started up the Everyday Sexism Project and the book that then came out of that project had a big impact on me. I found it just amazing reading, if harrowing. Um, so I'm really excited to read another book by her. And this book explores misogyny in contemporary society, how pervasive it is throughout 
all layers of society, how it's been there for a long time um, and it's not a new thing um, and yeah I'm, I'm excited to read this, I think Laura Bates does a really great job analysing and exploring these issues um, in the world around us. I then have Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik, I was sent this book by the publisher and I'm so so keen to get to it. It is a retelling of the Rumpelstiltskin fairy tale, which is not something I've ever read an entire novel dedicated to, but I'm so excited about. I think it's a really fascinating fairy tale and the idea of a novel length retelling just had me instantly and loads of people have been really excited about this one. I've seen it on loads of anticipated releases lists so it's got a lot of hype around it. I'm trying not to let the hype affect me but I think if this is done well it could be spectacular and I've previously read Naomi Novik's Temeraire book which is the first in a series of books set during the Napoleonic War but with dragons and I enjoyed that so I'm well up for trying more by this author. I do also have a sequel that I would like to get to and I think once I start I'll just kind of compulsively quickly read because that's my experience of this author's books in the past and that is Lair of Dreams by Libba Bray. This is the second in her Diviners series. I read the Diviners uh, maybe a month or so ago and really enjoyed it. These books are set during the 1920s in New York. They follow an array of characters as multiple perspective although Evie is very much the instigator of the story. She's the one that we begin with and she feels at the centre of everything and Evie has a sort of magical paranormal ability to learn about people's pasts through touching objects that belong to them and in the first book she kind of used that to help people solve a paranormal murder mystery that was going on in New York and I'm excited to see what is in store next for Evie and the rest of the characters. But I also have a couple of books I might get out of the library so I like to make a list of what's available in my library and that I would like to borrow soon and then I can go and pick it up or reserve it. So there's a couple of things here that I'd be interested in picking up from my library and I'd love to know which ones you think I should prioritise because I try to only get one or two books out of the library at a time so that I can actually read them in the span that I have them borrowed without renewing them. The first one is The Clan of the Cave Bear. This is a historical fiction book but with a really interesting premise because the historical period that it's set in is prehistoric. It's set 35,000 years ago and follows two characters who are neither Homo sapiens. One of them is a Neanderthal and they are both hominin species pre-Homo sapien. And I believe it's about those two characters' relationships and um, being from different species of hominin. And you might not know this about me, but when I first started university and I was doing archaeology, I did a lot of prehistoric archaeology in first year and if I had not continued with classics and ancient Greece and ancient Rome, I most certainly would have gone into prehistoric archaeology and um, the evolution of different hominins because I found that fascinating. I loved reading and writing about um, the evolution of different hominin species and what we know about them through archaeology, so I think the idea of reading a historical fiction book following um, Neanderthal, who is a species that I wrote essays on, is so interesting. I am so, so up for that. I think what an interesting concept, what an interesting world to imagine and give voice and thought to these characters, and it is very likely that different hominin species did uh, mingle and breed with one another. Um, lots of people think that the reason that Homo sapien survived and Neanderthals died out because we were actually cousins who evolved separately as opposed to one evolving from the next is that we bred and Homo sapien genes just sort of overpowered the Neanderthal genes. It's all very very interesting and I just love the idea of a historical fiction book with that in the background. Now I've got myself really excited for that one so I think I might take it out but the other book that I might take out is The Helios Disaster. This is a contemporary novel inspired by Greek mythology. The opening lines of the blurb are The Helios Disaster is a contemporary mythical tale in which a father gives birth to a 12 year old girl splitting his head open in the process. Father and daughter are separated, the girl is placed into foster care and comes under the spell of the Pentecostal movement. So in Greek mythology, Zeus actually gave birth to Athena through having his head split open. So I imagine that's the kind of initial premise, although I don't know how literal the blurb is, but I think that's a really interesting 
premise. Um, I, I enjoy seeing how people kind of interpret myth in a new way, especially in a contemporary setting. So I'm really intrigued by that one and I was really pleased to see my library did have it. But lastly, I did want to mention a book that's on my Kindle because uh, the possibility is that I'll want to use my Kindle for the sake of convenience to read a book at some point. And the next book that I plan on reading on my Kindle is Outrun the Wind. This is another book with its roots in mythology. So this one's actually set in antiquity as opposed to a contemporary setting and it follows characters from Greek mythology, specifically Atalanta, the female warrior, and the goddess Artemis, who was the goddess of the hunt. And Atalanta has done something to upset the goddess Artemis, um, who's very strict about no relationships with, for those who are part of her cult. She herself is also the virgin goddess. And I'm not exactly sure what she's done to upset her, but she has strict rules, so it's a possibility that she's broken one of those and she must go on a quest to appease the goddess. But at the same time, I also believe there is a queer romance between Atalanta and another female character in the background of this story. So I'm intrigued to see how that progresses. And I love books retelling myths. I love books starring mythological characters. I am always there for that stuff. It's so interesting to me. Um, I love, love, love it. I mean, I would love to write a myth retelling myself one day, but in the meantime, I'll just consume everybody else's. So those are the books that I would like to get to during the Booktubeathon. Again, I am not going to read eight books in a week unless I just end up with the flu and can't do anything else, this seems unlikely. Um, but I'm hoping to get to at least four of those, maybe more. I'm going to try and really have fun with the readathon and really take part and get online. So um, do let me know if you're also participating in the Booktubeathon. What do you plan on reading during that week? And have you got any thoughts on the books I've mentioned in this video? Until next time, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.